Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Boy, a little abrupt ending there, wasn't it? Uh, we're going to try and make sense of some numbers that I'm looking at. And that's what this channel is all about. Uh, I'm going to state the obvious on a few things here. But uh, do me a favor and smash that like button. Some of these numbers are getting very interesting. No surprise here that listings under contract are declining. They're going down pretty, pretty good clip. They should be going up this time of year, but they're not. We've got interest rates up over 6%. Obviously, that's going to impact sales. The other thing that we're seeing, which is, uh, again, obvious, listings are going up by 1,000 homes a week. At this rate, by August, sellers, you need to sharpen your pencil, lower your price by Labor Day. Um, it's pretty obvious we're headed towards at least near a balanced market. So if you're considering selling, uh, there's ominous signs that the party's over as far as getting everything that you that you want. But here's the interesting part and something that I want to speak about because we're looking at um, active listings of 12,400 today. And, you know, if you're a follower of this channel, you know, that's climbed quite a bit. Uh, if we can even use the word normal anymore, normal is about 27,000 homes on the market, um, anywhere from a four to six months supply of homes. Right now, we're shy of under maybe, well, we got 3,200 homes selling every seven days, and we have 12,000 homes on the market. So do the math. But here's the interesting part that I dug up because I went in the MLS, I pulled out a piece of paper, my calculator, started writing out a bunch of notes because I went, who are these people that are listing their homes? Now, one of the friends of the channel here, and, and she's a guest on her channel, Jackie, Jacqueline Smith, she said yesterday, she goes, you know what, Rick? There are six out of the 12,400 listings, 6,249 are vacant. So what? Well, who owns a vacant home? 300 of them are builders, spec homes. They're ready to go, just about ready to go. So they're now starting to put them back on the MLS. Before, these builders were ignoring us like the plague. They didn't feel like they needed to be on the MLS. So they weren't playing. Now they're back, and they're coming back with a vengeance. There's 1,079 or I buyers just between two I buying companies, Open Door and Offerpad. Redfin hardly has any let up there anymore, and Zillow is done with their disastrous uh, listing of homes. But uh, they took a lot of those homes and sold them to investors, like 200 at a time. Those are probably going to start showing up here. And 150 of these are investors, at least 150. So when you scroll through it and you see LLCs and you see several of the homes. So between I buyers, home builders, and investors, half of active inventories right now are vacant homes where people are taking profits. So they're not selling out of fear. They're cashing in. They're taking their profits. It's going to be interesting to watch to see how many of these homes are out there because they were getting up to about 30% of our market. You know that because you were being outbid by cash investors. They're still out there. They're still out there now trying to buy. I get five text messages a week. You know, hey, this is Katie. You got anything for me? They're still out there. It's going to slow down though. And I'm curious and I'd like to get somebody from either offer pad or open door on this, on this show. I'm going to see if I can reach out this week, see if any of them are willing to come chit chat. Cause I'm wondering what's, what's their end game? Because I mean, obviously they got a lot of hedge fund money, investor money out there to help them purchase all these homes. Open door finally started making a profit. So did offer pad, but uh, you know, the party looks like it's winding down, right? What are they going to go away or what is their business model going to look like? If homes start receding in value, what is their business model? I mean, obviously it was buy, fix up, and sell at a profit. Well, now you buy, fix up, now what? Are you going to turn into a rental company? Are you not going to buy anymore? Are you just going to be a hybrid listing company? Um, I, You know they've sat around in the boardroom and said, okay, now look, if real estate goes down, what are we going to do? Um, unlike Zillow, it just said, ah, this didn't work. I got to get out of here. It's kind of funny speaking of Zillow, uh, Michael Orr, who's at the Cromford Report, um, he he put up an interesting thing uh, this morning. I got I to gotta show this to you. And he says, Zillow still sends me the frequent emails about the home in Mesa that I moved out of in 2017 and sold in 2018. It's changed hands twice since I lived there, 
but that somehow seems to have escaped their notice and they think I will be planning to sell it. They're now telling me they expect the value to increase by 16% over the next 12 months. Bless them. If this is the kind of forecast their algorithm produced, it was definitely a wise idea for them to leave the high buying business. He's kind of poking them with his stick there. You're still telling me to sell my house. I haven't lived there since 2017. And you're telling me it's going to grow by 16% when we've got all this data staring us in the face that's showing us that real estate is starting to slow down. But how big is that investor pool of investors and eye buyers that are trying to take a profit now? And because right now, you know, mom and pop homeowner, 53% of you are sitting out there with a 4% 4, 4 or below mortgage. You're probably not going to be rolling into that number of homes for sale anytime soon. So it's possible, not sure it's going to happen, but it's possible that this escalation of listings we have plateaus. If the investors are done and they've got, gotten out, they got their profits, the ones that want to keep them as rentals, keep them as rentals, and the rest have taken their profits and left the market. What's the backfill? Well, there could be backfill by homeowners if they sense fear and they start to panic and they want to put their house on the market because they've seen all these homes up for sale. They don't really know that they've been sold by open door and offer pad and investors. So, but the numbers show, and you're going to see the headlines so show all these new listings that are out there. And so as I like to look at the new listings, I like to figure out who the heck has them and why they're selling. And I think we figured it out. Now we got to watch it and see how often this happens. And how long is this trend going to stay with us? So it's going to be something worth watching. Stay on this channel. I'll try to keep you up to speed as best I can. Take care.